John Foley joins us. John, what did Rob Thompson have to say about Spencer Turnbull? Unfortunately, Jamie, it was exactly what you hoped uh, he wasn't going to say, which is that they don't know yet. Michael, we'll no more tomorrow. <clears throat> he said Turnbull felt something on his his next to final pitch that he threw. He threw a curveball. Said he felt something sort of in his shoulder slash back area. Um, no update on it yet. Um, but you know, at this point in the season, of course, they're going to act in an abundance of caution, take him out. So hopefully, it was still more of a precautionary thing. But um, we don't we don't know yet. And I would imagine we likely won't know until tomorrow uh, the extent of Turnbull's injury. Did anybody oh, ask yikes. him about like the move to the bullpen and back up and like it, you know? It's it's he doesn't know obviously he's not a doctor but like I guess you don't grill him on that right away but I wonder if that had something to do with you know the shoulder injury. Yeah, Thompson didn't have anything to say about it, but uh, if the chatter online is any indication, there's, it's going to be a subject of discussion. <laughs> you, you know, people weren't happy when he left the rotation in the first place, so then for him to leave for for Walker and then come back and then uh, gets hurt if he is hurt. And this is extended time right away. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people unhappy about that. Uh, you know, how much it plays into it, going to the bullpen, coming back. I know I'm not a doctor either. Possibly uh, But no. it doesn't seem, doesn't seem great. I mean, like these, these starters, when they build on to these starters, usually there's a pretty long runway. Um, Thompson did say that if, if Turnbull misses time while Walker's still out, that Mercado would be the, uh, quote, leading candidate to take over that, that starter role. Um, I think they could sort of maneuver it as they're up against the break here and there's day off. I don't think they even have to use a fifth starter if they don't want to. Um, well, they can go yeah. up to almost 10 days without using it. Yeah. Yeah. And you would think by after the break, I, I think Walker's expected back and hopefully Turnbull's okay too. Um, but if they do have a – Mercado has been starting recently down in AAA, pitching well, um, went over 90 pitches in his last couple starts before coming to the majors to be a reliever. So he could treat this as a little in-between throwing day, um, his, his game yesterday, and probably get back on track without too much, too much concern um, to be a starter. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, back to your points about Spencer Turnbull, uh, just a quick thought there, because I know people, as we know, are going to immediately be blaming it on the fact that Spencer Turnbull is put into the bullpen, had not started since April 30th, makes a start today. But as we also know, Spencer Turnbull's history of injuries uh, he did have Tommy John surgery in 2021. Uh, he's had shoulder injuries, back injuries. Uh, he dealt with a forearm strain. He dealt with an elbow injury, a neck strain. Throughout the course of his career, every season except for 2019, he's played under 56 games, or excuse me, 56 innings, uh, not even games, 56 innings that Turnbull has played. So he has been injury plagued throughout his career, and it's unfortunate now that we have to wait for the test results. But as you mentioned, Michael Mercado does have the ability to slot right into that role and we don't have to have him play until July 6th anyways because of the different scheduling uh, days off that the Phillies have. Was anything else said in regards to just overall pitching staff updates or, um, you know, just kind of the plan moving forward if they are going to have a timeline of maybe when that announcement is officially going to come out? I know Rob's not a man of many, many words, but anything that can kind of hint at when we can expect some news moving forward? Yeah, I mean, best I got is uh, probably not likely today. Um, that it would be tomorrow, which, you know, reading between the lines is a little bit of a concern. Um, just in that, you know, that probably involves a, a true uh, evaluation, maybe some imaging. Um, you know, the the best thing to hear from Rob would have been, uh, you know, he was, he felt a little twinge or something, so we took him out. Super it wasn't bad. It sounds like it, it might be more. Um, as you mentioned, Renee, Turnbull uh, is often injured. Um you know, so that so you, you mix in an often injured player, um, and then uh, at the same time, you know, shuttling back and forth from bullpen to to starter, uh, it's uh, it's a recipe, I guess, for for what we saw today. Um, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be too down. I, I, big picture, I'd take a look at everything we're thinking about. We're talking about the fifth starter. We're talking about the third base coach. These, if these are our concerns with the team. You get into Dusty we're, Watham, we're, John. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, issues with him today. Oh boy, we don't want the smoke again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, it hasn't been great. Uh, you know, it's a tough job. <laughs> their base coach. You know, nobody's ever going to notice uh, when you make great calls. Um, 
but when you have a rough couple of days like uh Watham has um it's uh it really it really sticks out so you know we'll see, we'll see what they do here it's you know late in june these are things you're not going to worry about too much on a day like today um but if you know game three the nlcs and you don't score a run that you could have scored on a sack fly uh you know you might look at this and say well the warning signs were there <laughs> So. Yeah, seriously. John, uh, Bryce Harper, potentially going to be NL Player of the Month for back-to-back -back months. He continues his tear. Uh, this guy's incredible. Uh, you know, I've heard the discussion in the discourse this week, whether it's sports radio or, or Twitter. If he gets a ring, you know, he could be the best Philly ever. And I'm like, all right, Mike Schmidt was the best ever third baseman. He can certainly get close and maybe eclipse him, but Bryce Harper on an absolute tear right now. Yeah, he's he's playing out of his mind, um, and yeah, I, I think you've heard a lot of people say that's sort of it. Sort of feels like quietly playing out of his mind, and that you know we don't make a big deal about it anymore because it's what we've grown to expect from Bryce Harper, uh, fair or not. Um, you know, it, I think I think he's he's certainly in the MVP conversation already. I think if his numbers stay anywhere close to Otani's, you have to give it to Harper. There's never been uh, uh, anyone playing solely designated hitter named the MVP before. I think it's tough to um, it's tough to measure how how much it should matter for Harper to play first base and, and Otani to sit most of the game. You know, in my com completely unbiased view, uh, it should matter a lot. I know you know, folks will point to war and say, well, that's supposed to incorporate defense. And even with the defensive value, Otani has a higher war. But there's a lot of other factors that you can't quantify in there. The fact that Harper's able to play first base allows Schwarber to DH, so you don't need Schwarber in left field, so you can put someone else in left field. There's all sorts of benefits for your team when an individual is able to play the field. Uh, and it might not show up, it might not be quantifiable in, in war, which I don't really trust anyway, because it says, uh, Ryan Howard is, is uh, you know, barely an above average player over the course of his career. So, so uh, all I have to say is I think Harper's going to have a really strong case for MVP by the end of the season. To start having a conversation about the greatest Philadelphia athlete of all time, I, I think that's a conversation for another day. I don't think he's, he's not touching yeah. it right now, let alone like some of the folks in other sports, but you know. He's great. <laughs> he is great. He definitely is. And to have seven home runs, 24 RBIs, a 313 average, 407 OBP, 583 slugging, and a 990 OPS in May. And then to follow it up in June with already, as of today, uh, seven, seven home runs, 15 RBI, and uh, his updates, his numbers haven't updated since post game for today yet, but came into today at least with a 390, 468. 756, 1.224 OPS. Bryce Harper is quietly continuing to get better as the season goes on, and it's been really fun to watch. I know we were talking about it before you came on, John. And as you mentioned, like MVP conversation without a doubt, even with just the fact that he's been locked down into first base and been phenomenal defensively for the most part, minus the occasional blooper here and there of his footing or something. But another guy that actually broke a nice drought today, Brandon Marsh. Two months exactly to the day since he had hit a home run. Uh, he had five in all of April and has had zero since then. And Brandon Marsh today, four hits, a home run, could have had another RBI, as we talked about before, if Dusty wasn't uh, being a little bit passive there. But uh, anything post-game around, you know, even on the offensive side production-wise, in terms of Brandon Marsh and, you know, overall what Rob had to say about the team. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody happy to see uh, Marsh doing well. He was the the player of the game, getting uh, you know attacked attacked by the daycare in the in the post game interview. Um, it was uh, yeah, it was great great to see. Um, you know, you, you start to wonder was he 100 percent when he came when he came back from that uh, from his own injury. Um, he certainly looked 100 percent today. Um, I know at least one of those hits came off of a lefty, which is which is yes, of interest for those on, yeah. who are <laughs> who really want Marsh to be out there every day. Um, you know, I, I it's uh, he's he's a great player. He's a, he's a fan favorite. Um, I'm very much of the opinion that you know now here in June or or July would be the time to to maybe give him a chance against lefties and see what he could do with some you know extended extended play. Um, 
it would be at the expense of Whit Merrifield. I know fans would be very, very, very sad about that. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not Whitley. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, not the crowd favorite. Uh, <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what they end up doing there. But uh, even if it's still sort of in this almost platoon role, it's it's great to see Marsh rolling along. John, do you have any uh, Jose Alvarado concerns? It's it's not major right now, but it feels like the last two three weeks he's kind of labored through a lot of stuff. He hasn't had his location a couple times. I wouldn't say I'm concerned, but I'm starting to keep my eye on it. Any uh, any level of concern from you there? Yeah, Jamie, I think I'm right where you are. That I, I haven't reached concern, but I'm at some point of like pre-concern. <laughs> uh, it did. We're like the pre-cogs in that movie. <laughs> right, right, right. right. It, you know, it's you see this a lot with with really good closers, right? When they come in with a big lead, that um, they're not quite used to that and and things can get uh they can struggle a little bit in in roles they're not it was used terrible to. in non-save opportunities a lot of great closers are terrible in non close situations yeah 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 so i i wouldn't be concerned about him until i saw him in come in with a one-run lead and uh and really get knocked around then um that's not a concern but yeah he hasn't looked quite like himself the good news is there that you do you have a lot of options in that bullpen. We saw it today. Spencer Turnbull leaves unexpectedly in the third. You got shut out anything from what Soto, Kirkering, Strom. Um, uh, who else? Who am I missing? But you know, again, a lot of arms there. Um, but there's any Tyler's trying Alvarado. to shut me up here, John. He says uh, Alvarado. Still only a 1.05 whip in his last 14 uh, appearances. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is another guy, you know, it's a little bit, it's kind of like Harper's. This is another guy who's a victim of, of the, his own, victim of setting the expectations that he has, right? Like we just see Alvarado and this should be one, two, three, and then he's giving up a run and like what's going on here. But I, I, don't, I don't think we need to. Again, I don't think we need to be concerned yet. And yeah, good job, Tyler, jumping in on this on this task. Tyler just bodied <laughs> me. He was like, "Shut well, up!" I'm, I'm just not. I'm not concerned. I'm I mean, not concerned yet. I'm, I'm just. He looks like he's labored a lot lately. Well, it's the, the, it's the, he was missing by a lot. Today. It's he wasn't the, it's the product of a guy who throws hard and at times can be effectively wild. You are gonna look at that and go, "Okay, his location wasn't particularly strong today." But I mean, we can take it into a smaller sample size of. The last six and two-thirds innings that he's pitched, which is seven appearances, he's given up um, eight base runners in six and two-thirds. It's a one-two whip. He struck out 10. He has given up three earned runs. It's a 405 ERA over a very, very small sample size. You stretch that out to 15 games, it's 2-5. You stretch it out to 30 games, it's 2.22. I have no concerns over uh, uh, a, a lapse in, in command over a, a four-game sample size or a six-inning sample size. It doesn't bother me nearly as much yeah, I know, but as <laughs> bullpen arms are viewed in small sample sizes. 